Look, Alistair, thank you so much for joining us, especially late your time in the UK. Well, yeah. Anyway, it's nice to be with you, Adam. It's a good oh, time. It's always here. a pleasure, but, Alistair. I, I was surprised when I looked at the calendar and realized it's been half a year since we last had you on the channel. We can't have that much time go by before your next one. Um, but very good to see you again. Lots to talk about here with you. Uh, right as we right before we get into the details, though, let me just ask the general question I like to ask you every time you're on the channel, just to set the context here for our viewers. What's your current assessment of the global economy and financial markets? Well, it's bifurcated into two sections. And um, on the one side, we have got the uh, economy that which we all follow, the American, the European, um, the Japanese, and so on. And on the other side, we've got the economy we don't follow, which is the Asian, Asian hegemons, uh, Russia, China, and a growing BRICS uh, tribe. Um, and it would appear that that tribe will increase quite materially um, uh, after the meeting in Johannesburg uh, on the 22nd to the 24th of August. So the world is split into two halves. And um, we can see from the slowdown of um, uh, money supply that uh, there is a credit crunch, as it were, um, arriving in the first half, the one which we're familiar with, uh, America, Europe, etc. Uh, and um, that credit crunch is going to get worse because uh, banks are now seeing that there is significant risk in lending. I'll give you an example. Um, we have had um, a severe crisis developing in our uh, water utilities uh, in England. Uh, Thames Water, which is the largest of the water utilities, was uh, taken over by um, uh, a private equity um, uh, fund quite some time ago. And of course, it did what private equity funds always did. It leveraged up its investment by basically saddling Thames Water, a utility with a stable income stream, saddled it up with debt so that um, you know the sort of 8% return, which is the sort of level that the regulator permits, suddenly becomes 40%. You know, what's not to like, but this was done at low interest rates. And of course, they now need refinancing and refinancing is difficult because interest rates have literally shot up. And if you look at the yield on the 10 year gilt, I mean, it's gone up from sort of pretty close to zero. And uh, as we speak, it's just broken above four and a half percent. And it's done that in a matter of uh, almost a year, just a, uh, slightly more than a year, I suppose, about 13 months. That is a major problem for all leveraged businesses. And banks know this. So they have got a problem. Do they want to lend more money to these leveraged businesses with an uncertain interest rate outlook? Or do they want to just step back and say, you know, go elsewhere? I think the answer is quite simple. We have got a credit crisis coming. We are going to have a shortage of credit when demand for credit, demand for refinancing, mortgage field as well is another prime example, um, you know, is just escalating. So I think we are on the verge of a crisis. Now, what we need to do is to hope that um, uh, inflation comes down very rapidly. Now, that won't cure the credit crisis, but at least the background will be slightly better than what we have at the moment. Is that going to happen? Well, here we have a problem because um, we, you know, the, the Ukraine situation um, is deteriorating. The Ukrainians have launched their summer offensive and it's got absolutely nowhere. Um, Putin has put down a, a supposed rebellion um, by the Wagner group uh, and uh, become come out of it a lot stronger as a result by every analysis that I've seen anyway. And on that basis, I would expect the Russians to have another assault on Ukraine. And this time, my personal view is that they will probably take out Kiev. Now, if that's the case, we've got a real problem because we're, we're in a war which NATO cannot afford to lose, nor can Russia afford to lose. So how serious is this escalation going to get? And remember that when Russia first um, uh, invaded the eastern provinces of Ukraine and also tried to take over Kiev. Um, sanctions uh, introduced by the West drove up commodity and energy prices to, you know, I mean, just through the roof. Um, I think WTI, uh, WTI oil got as far as $140. It's half that now. 
Um, but you can see the potential for uh, the escalation of uh, the Ukraine situation to drive up commodity prices and make us abandon all hope of lower commodity prices, lower inflation, whatever. But I would um, emphasize that the credit crisis is a problem on top of it. It is not dependent on this situation. So this is going to be very tricky times. Um, and uh, we're already seeing bond yields rising again. I mean, as I said earlier, I can see that the 10 year, I'm looking at my screen, the 10 year uh, US guilt is now le leading, sorry, yielding just over four and a half percent which is um, the highest it's been since the um, Lehman crisis. So this is, this is a serious situation. I do not see much hope for financial asset values. Uh, we know that equity markets have become incredibly distorted by, I mean, particularly in America, the fangs, you know, the, the, the um, uh, tech stocks. Um, if you take tech stocks out of the S&P, the S&P is pretty disappointing to, to say the least. So, you know, this is the situation we face. Now, that's one half of it. The other half of it, of course, is China and Russia. I mean, they must be laughing all the way to the bank over our difficulties and trying to resist to make it even worse for us. Um, they have a plan and, uh, you know, we'll see whether it works. But basically, the plan is to um, uh, engender an industrial revolution throughout Asia. Uh, and uh, we're talking about uh, the benefits all told also for the suppliers to these two hegemons of uh, roughly four and a half, four point eight billion people against our lot. How many are we? 1.3 billion. BRICS, um, which incorporates, I mean, on the expanded basis, it will incorporate um, quite a lot of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization uh, members, associates and dialogue partners. Um, leaving, I think, merely the Central Asian states out of out of BRICS. So you're going to see this lot coming together very, very seriously in August. And that is one third of global GDP, and it's 64 percent of the world's population. So I'm afraid, Adam, we are a small minority player in this, and we have got some enormous ch challenges if we fail to win the war in Ukraine. And assuming we don't escalate it into a nuclear war, then we are toast. This is a, this is a real problem for us. So, I mean, where's the best place to live? Believe it or not, probably Russia, <laughs> because tax there is 13%, flat rate income tax, corporation tax is 20%. By and large, if you don't get involved with politics, they leave you alone and you can do business. Can we do that in our regulated entities? We are at an enormous disadvantage to um, the, the Eastern he uh, hegemons uh, controlling Asia. So anyway, that's a sort of brief overview of the whole situation. <laughs> I'm sure it can be taken. <laughs> okay. Blur. Boy, I got to uh, I, I got to then close the oven here. I was about to stick my head into uh, so I can ask you these remaining questions here. Um, all right. So <clears throat> we have a very bifurcated world. It's really Team West and Japan versus uh, Team Asia slash BRICS. Um, I have interviewed a, a number of people who uh, think similarly to you, both about the, the bipolarization of what's going on geopolitically, but also that China is looking to invest a lot more in the Asia Pacific region in creating a, a more sustainable consumer-based economy there so it's less dependent up, upon Team West. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, for better or worse, your outlook is shared by others that come on this channel. 